Hey guys, Ken here from shops3d.ca. One of the questions that we consistently get asked by our customers is what is the difference between PET and PETG? There's no better person to answer that question than Nate from BASF. We recently did a webinar with him and here's what he had to say about that. Right, so I, um, I, I wanted to include um, this visual uh, just to help end users kind of separate all the different types of materials that are out there uh, and why they're, they're different and how their mechanical properties depend on these, these structures that you see here on the picture. So on the left-hand side, you see amorphous in the blue triangle, semi-crystalline in that orange slice, and, and then finally elastomer in that green slice. What I've, I've highlighted in red are actually materials that BASF offers, um, and this list is, is currently growing. Um, but, but in general, this, you've, you may have seen this, this figure before with the pyramid. So the more standard materials are on the bottom in terms of uh, the cost is, is commonly lower, uh, but the mechanical properties are also a, a little bit lower. Uh, but as you go up that pyramid, you, you, you can enter, um, you can start doing applications that are more advanced, such as with, uh, let's say a, PA, a nylon six or a nylon 12, those materials are more, are more tough um, and more applicable to different types of solutions that you're trying to work with. And, and then finally on the top, we have the high temperature materials, uh, which we referenced before as PPSU, PEI, and your peak materials. So these, uh, with all of these materials, as you go up the pyramid, um, you're able to use these 3D printed parts at higher uh, temperatures as well as in more harsh environments, depending on uh, if you're using uh, chemical resistance and, and so on. Hey, Nate, uh, what would you say is the main, um, so you categorize these as amorphous semi-crystalline and elastomer. What does that actually mean in terms of the uh, filament um, and what properties are you know, exhibited by an amor amorphous materials, for example, versus a semi-crystalline material? Right, so your amorphous materials, uh, as you can see on the top right, they, they don't have any crystalline structure. So these amorphous materials tend to be um, a little easier to print with. They also tend to be a little bit more clear um, just because with semi-crystalline materials, the, the actual material itself will reflect light differently. So uh, amorphous materials tend to be easier to print with, um, a little bit tougher, but whereas the semi-crystalline materials, because of that specific arrangements on the molecular level, they tend to have um, better, uh, better hardness as well as um, more chemical resistance as well. So that's more or less um, some, some uh, differences between amorphous and semi-crystalline materials. Right, so with, with RPET, it does come from, um, it, it is um, a more sustainable process where we take parts from a different, um, a different part of our application, and then we recycle that into pellets and then make it into a filament, which is 3D printable. So with anything recycled, you may be, uh, I guess, cautious about whether it has the same type of mechanical properties compared to um, like the virgin material with, with, uh, with plain, uh, with regular PET. But with our PET, it does give you this nice um, translucent blue nature uh, it, it certainly does offer better mechanical properties than PLA. Uh, it, it, it tends to be uh, tougher and harder. Um, so if you're using it for, for applications that need to kind of resist any um, being punctured or being any impact, I, I would likely go with, with RPET over, over PLA. Right on. So let's talk about, about uh, what actually PET is and what makes it different than PETG, because that's something that, uh, uh, that's a question that gets asked very, very often uh, when, when people are trying to buy either PET or PETG. So maybe you can shed some light here. Right, so yeah, I mean, going into a little bit more detail, this is, it, it is a strange situation where there are so many questions about this particular comparison with PET and PETG, and not a whole lot out there in terms of explaining the actual difference. So I'll spend a little bit of time here um, uh, just describing the actual structure. So polyethylene terephthalate, that is what PET stands for. It's commonly seen in, in soda uh, bottles as well as in cloth fibers and packaging. Um, 
So if you look, if you take a look at this structure in the top right hand corner, that is what the, the actual material looks like with that big hexagon ring and, and those O, the red O letters, that really provides the, the rigidity and toughness. And then we have um, more chains that go off on the right that provide that allow for that a little bit of flexibility. So not so it's not being super rigid and, and brittle. So Felix, if you go to the, the next slide, I believe. Yep. So yeah, it's a little bit more detail. Um, I know it can be, it may be a little confusing at first, but if you look on, on the very left here with, with, with regular PET, that is the structure where we have that blue component and that yellow component. So yeah, once again, that blue component really gives you the rigidity, the strength and, and, and stiffness of the material, that yellow component provides um, the more flexibility. So how PET differs from PETG, um, that, so in PETG, we actually add another component called CHDM, which stands for cyclohexane dimethanol. So I changed it here in this visual in the middle where it's that actually that red component so as we add more of that red component, it becomes amorphous and a little bit, uh, a little bit more flexible to work with. So yeah, semi-crystalline tends to be more tough um, and, and a little bit more rigid. Whereas when we add more of this CHDM material, it allows it to be more flexible um, uh, and also still easy to print with. So we, I mean, it, as you transition to more using less of that yellow components and more of that red components, you get into different types of materials like PCTG and, and perhaps PCT, if, if you're familiar with them, don't have to focus on that too much for now, but just wanted to show that in PETG, you're actually substituting a little bit of that yellow component for that red component, and that allows um, for the material to be more flexible than PET. So I hope that clears up the differences between PET and PETG. To see the entire webinar with Nate from BASF, click on the link below. If you want to see more of this content, join our social media channels where we'll announce new webinars and new videos coming up. If you'd like to see previous webinars that we've done, go to our website shop3d.ca webinars to see the entire list. Until next time, 